Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> right. Welcome to episode seven of I... Saturday Talks in the A. And I just want to welcome back Angel Rosales because yes. he was in California. Tell yes, us how was it? I'm back. Just a quick little recap. Um, Gabe will tour the podcast for the first for the like past two weeks where I've been out, I've been out and he's, he's done a very good job. So props to you, Gabe. Thank you for holding the fort down for me. But yeah, I went to San Francisco, went to go see some family, went to LA, Hayward, all around California, just spent some time with some family, like I said before already. Awesome time. I had a lot of a lot of fun just relaxing, taking it easy, you know, give my body a break yeah. from all the working out and stuff. Did you talk to any girls? Yeah, there's there's some Asian baddies over there, bro. <laughs> yeah, they, they were they were thick, man. Like, you know, like there's like the Asians, us the Asians here, they it ain't nothing compared to the Asians over there, bro. Like like <laughs> like like Jabron, like, imagine, imagine a, a a a luscious black black woman, right? Mm-hmm. But in an Asian body. <laughs> That's the move. Yeah, just crazy, oh, man. Was, yeah, I'm a loyal man. I can't talk. Yeah, dude. I'm a loyal like, man. Like, like, imagine Bayer but will make in Fox body. Oh my. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I Bea. haven't even got that imaging because it's like a. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna do it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. You know, you know, Oksana Flores. Yep. Okay, imagine her but with like twenty five pounds and and uh and uh hips, and a, and a booty. Oh yeah, damn. Yeah. They make her Asian. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Oh my. Yeah. Before we continue, I just want to introduce real quick my boy J- Jabril. Hey guys, it's Jabril. What the fuck do I say? <laughs> That's uh, good enough. Talk about yourself. <laughs> um, what do you do? So I uh I go to Georgia State for college. It's stupid i guess college anyway i go to Georgia <coughs> state um facts my major is film and i minor i don't know what i'm minoring uh yeah I, I take videos uh if you guys want some photos done williams jabril five on instagram hit me up uh, self plug self plug i like it self plug okay i start doing that too yeah but uh like i said today's guest is jabril super excited for him to be part of this podcast today it's a great way to either just hang out with my friends for a little bit too but uh, back to my San Francisco topic. I uh, was there for two weeks, had some fun. The weather was nice. And um, yeah, like I said, Gabe held on the fort pretty well for the podcast Thank episodes. You. I yeah. appreciate that. And we just uploaded uh, one of the ones he did with his girlfriend. Him and his girlfriend were just talking about some relationship stuff and things like that. So if you guys, you guys should definitely check that one out. If y'all want to do another relationship one, let me know because I will gladly hop. Hey, we'll have a part two coming soon. Don't worry. Yeah, we'll yeah, have we a part will. two. Especially since all of us can relate to it too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So today, guys, we have some pretty touchy topics, I will say. Um, Viewer's destruction is advised. <laughs> <laughs> I said this is great. Destruction. So, discretion. I apologize, everyone. So Gabe is going to be the one interested in these topics. He came up with them. But uh, I definitely really like that we're talking about this because it's something that's not really talked about. I feel like people want to talk about this and they like make an effort to, but they never really follow through the conversation. Like on yeah. social media, they always bring it up a lot. And what, I'm, what we're talking about is... Um, I'll pass on the game. What are the topics today? Uh, the topics we're going to be talking about today is how to improve mental health and how to overcome insecurities. And like I say, you know, on social media, I feel like a lot of times they always like post photos and like pictures. Or it's the same thing, but like, you know, stories or videos on the Instagram saying, make sure you always are open about like mental health or like stuff like that. You know, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like a lot of people are promoting, promoting it now, but nothing's like really happening. Nothing. You know, so I just feel like it's important, especially like to view from like us college students. Yeah. Because, you know, I feel like in college, it's like a whole nother type of depression out there, man. Yeah. Because like just all the stress and feeling like overflowed and like overloaded and just feel like you're overwhelmed. So um, it just be fun. And um, for me personally, I've never been depressed. You know, I just I've been I've, been, I've felt overwhelmed. But yeah. um, that's what we brought Jabril on today. Um, Jabril was fortunate enough to be able to uh, share a story on today. So thank you, Jabril, for uh being like that like i said jabril's like, be jabril's been through it. a lot man he's uh definitely one of the strongest people that i know when it comes to stuff like this so uh you, both physically and mentally i'll give you that yeah and um so <laughs> we're, we're just really happy jabril came on today to share some of his uh mental issue story so we'll start off with the first topic right now and the first topic is gabe and the first topic we're going to be talking about is mental health <laughs> yes how yes. to improve it and i feel like jabril first i want to before I continue on, I just wanted to... I actually looked up the definition of mental health. Okay. And what it says, a person's condition with regard to their psychological and emotional well-being, which includes our emotional, psychological, so and social well-being. So what do you think... How accurate is that definition? 
Okay, let me read this one more time. <clears throat> uh, mental health definition of person's condition in regard to their psychological and emotional being, which includes emotional and psychological social well-being. Um, I think, yeah, I feel like that's, that's a very good, that, that, that's, that's a pretty accurate uh, definition of mental health. Um, it's literally just like, like you work out your body, you have to work out your mind. And if you're not working out your mind, then it's going to get unhealthy just like anything else. Yeah. Like it's everything in moderation. Um, yeah. Uh, what are you experiencing with it? So mental health, uh, talk about the diagnosis or before the diagnosis? I mean, I guess just uh, share your story. Sure. So okay. how, however long that takes or however you want to split it up is really up to you. Okay. Because like, it's your story, you know, and the fact that you're sharing it is already like really like nice of you to do. So just go on, tell your story. Okay. And then, on you, my guy. And then uh, if we have any questions, we'll be sure to uh, just kind of ask you along. Okay. Yeah. So... <clears throat> Uh, the earliest, like, 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 I wasn't, well, yeah, I wasn't necessarily born, like, mentally unhealthy. It was, it was more so, like, growing up in the environment that it was that did it for me. Um, so at first it started with, uh, should I put the, oh, here, okay. Yeah. But, so at first it started with, like, my, my parents' divorce, right? That was, like, a big thing. And then, um, I was more closer to my dad than I was with my mom. And, but mm-hmm. my dad was also... He was also manipulative in his own way, but my mom was more so, like, just being yelled at. My brother got treated better than me, stuff like that. Uh, so, move past the divorce. The divorce, my, my divorce was in, I was, I think I was still in Kansas. I was in elementary school when the divorce happened. And then in fifth grade is where, like, the depression, like, really, like, set in. Like, I remember, uh, like, no, no, okay, so notes that my counselor used to take from me, I remember. She, like, uh, I used to walk always in the back of the line um just i wouldn't really talk to people much things like that and then whenever i did it was just kind of for like a face i was putting on then fifth grade came <clears throat> had my first suicide attempt which was i think this one was like yeah i tried to swallow pills yeah oh, i tried try, i tried to swallow a whole bunch of fucking zyrtec <laughs> and then i looked up how i was gonna like die from it and i think it said like your liver was going to expand or something i was like oh <laughs> Oh fuck that! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no way, I'm going out like that. I shouldn't be laughing. At <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> look, 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 look. So, do you remember um side story? Remember uh, what was your name? Miss No, something like that. The the counselor at school. Which one? Uh, at North Cobb. She was. I don't want to say his name, but uh, Knowles Bowles. Oh yeah, I didn't tell yeah, about. yeah. She, when I first told her about the the Zyrtec thing, she's like, I "Bet your dad was like, where all the pills go?" <laughs> right? Yeah, she was. I was, sorry, I was like, "Yeah, it's, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine." She's funny, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's, funny. she's funny as hell, she's man. Funny. She's awesome. Um, my second suicide attempt was I put a gun to my head and like I was I remember like it was. Oh my God, dude! It was I was so my first one was in fifth grade. The next one was I think either seventh or eighth grade yeah seventh or eighth grade i put like the gun to my head and like i tried to like pull the trigger like it was it was a, it took a lot to do that and once i was able to like actually pull it like it i think the safety was on because it didn't pull back all the way or anything and like after yeah. that i was like that took a lot it was like fuck this i'm gonna sleep because <laughs> like that it, 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 it i was there for a good minute debating everything and then um after that oh what was it Okay, well, I guess you could say... I mean, I, I've put, like, knives to my throat, things like that. Um, definitely, like, like really, like, trying to fight, trying not to. Uh, and after that, I got put in the hospital. The way that happened was I was at school, <laughs> and <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm going to go see a therapist. Because I was like, you know, before, like, I told myself, like, one, one day I was like, you know, I, I think I'm going to kill myself one day, but before I do that... I need to make sure I do everything I can so I can't go out saying that I didn't try. Yeah. And I went to the counselor. She's asking me all these questions. And I'm just answering them, right? And I remember, like, <laughs> the look on her face. She looked genuinely concerned. But at the same time, I could tell she was hiding, like, another expression. And so she was like, um, okay, well, do you, if you go home, you feel like you probably do something. I'm like, probably, yeah. And she's like, okay. So I'm going to send you to the hospital. I was like, okay, when? Now. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, my God. Dude. And, like, yeah, it was, it was weird. I went to Peachford, and it was weird being in there, but the... It was a good experience because it gave me structure, and then now I'm here. Yeah, that was that was that was a year ago. Peter was a year ago. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, just a heads up, guys. Um, I never knew any about these suicide attempts Neither other than I. the um. Sorry. Now, me, me, and Angel have been knowing Jabril for like 
a good amount of time. Yeah, the only one I really knew was the most recent one he talked about. But other than that, the other ones he yeah, he told, talked about I never really knew. Sorry. So it was like a bit Whoa, of a surprise. Well, actually, I actually feel a little closer to you after that. Because, yeah. Like, I never, would, I never would, like bring it up in a casual conversation. I would yeah. never know about it. So I'm actually like, thank you for like, not only letting me and Angel know, but like the audience too, like knowing your experience with it. Yeah. Because like we said. Me and Angel don't have any experience or, like, thoughts about it. So, it really means a lot that you told us about it. Thank you, bro. Appreciate that, man. Well, hold on. Come here. Give me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, bro. I love you, man. <laughs> okay, Drew, bro. Um, so, as someone who's never really experienced it, but seen it from an outside point of view, what is it like to be inside your own head? Because, like, for me personally, like, my thoughts, it's like... Like, for me, like, if I want to stop thinking, I can stop thinking. I just be like, stop thinking. Then my head just stops thinking, you know? Yeah. But I've never had, like, an issue where, like, I have, like, a struggle between sadness and happiness, like, fighting each other between my head. Because yeah. that's kind of what I envision what happens. Yeah. So what is it like for that? Like, for, like, what is it like inside your head? Um, it's See, so that's, like, that's a weird question to answer. Because for me, like, that's just, my, my base thinking is that, right? So it's just, like. So, so like, that's your normal, for that's, example. That's my normal, okay. yeah. And so, like, to, the best way I could describe it, um. Okay, okay, okay. So, let's say something happens, right? Let's say that you... A puppy died? Hmm? Like a do- our dog died or something? No, no, no. Let's, okay, let's, let's go something simple. Let's say that you have a test and you have to have a number two pencil, right? Yeah. You don't have a number two pencil. You're probably going to freak out a little bit. See, I, I'm not, I don't have anxiety. I don't really freak out. Yeah. But let's say that my day, like, let's say my day didn't necessarily start, right? Yeah. Or even though, fucking no, my, my day started right. Didn't have a number, number two pencil. I'm stressing about class. I take that test and I'm like, fuck. That, like, that ruins my day. But it's just like, it's not like a, I want it to. It's just like, I'll think about that. And then as soon as I think about that, I start thinking about other things that happen. And it starts to like, so like a unfold. snowball effect? Yeah, pretty much. Like negativity. The, the, the more it goes down, like, the bigger the ball gets, pretty much. And it's. Sometimes I can be like, okay, like I can force myself to stop thinking about it. And then other times it's just like, it just happens and you can't. And it's, I guess, I guess you, you could say, people say it's a war in your head and I, I do agree with that. But um, I think it's more so like, yeah, okay, yeah, no, it, it, is, it is a war in your head, but it's also something that like you have to fight. Like, it feels like you're fighting physically too sometimes, especially when your friends ask you to hang out and stuff. Yeah. And it's just like sometimes like you just like I don't want to go, but the best thing to do is get out, because you know you're just gonna put you in a worse spot. Like it, depression makes you feel like depression is comforting. Honestly, it's it's weird as fuck. That, that's such a weird it's, thing to hear. It's I've weird never as heard shit. That. It's 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 comforting way because it's just like because you know you're sad. You don't want to do anything. You're laying in the bed. And it's like oh I should get up and do this. I should get up and do that. But and you're like oh but. I, it's not even like I don't feel like it. It feels like you can't do it. And, like, it's it's comforting because it's just, like, you get so used to it that you just think that's how it is for everybody all the time. And then even if you don't think that's everybody, for you, it's just like, well, this works. I'm, like, still alive. So it's just like, yeah. So do you think it's, like, it gives you an excuse to not do things productively? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, okay. So, 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 so is that why you t- say it's so comforting? Because it gives you, like, an excuse? It, 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 and, it, 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 and, it's, yeah. and it's a valid excuse. Yeah. It's, 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 an, it's an excuse. Like, honestly, I... I would say valid in some cases, but, like, there there have been times where, like, I've been depressed. Like, I could definitely get out of bed. It's just like, oh, fuck it, I don't want to. And then, like, I'm so used to not doing shit that, like, I, I'm just, my excuse is like, oh, fuck it, I'm just like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah. So, I, I think, I, I do think, like, I do think nowadays, uh, mental health, some sometimes, like, like, I can say more than sometimes. People use depression as a fucking excuse a lot, or people want to self-diagnose themselves. Like, yeah. Yes, yeah, going going on on the path you're going right now. Yeah, I feel like, I feel that too a lot of times. Like, I feel like for example, like a lot of girls our age. Yeah. If you so, if you guys didn't know, we're all about the age of 20, yeah. 20 21, 19, like that. Mm-hmm. So that's the kind of the age group, the demographic we're like talking about right now. So, but I feel like a lot of girls, like even in high school, like they they kind of like fake depress themselves to like attract other individuals. Yeah. So so what what is the opinion on that? Like to to fake to, to try to be fake depressed so you can so you can get a significant other to be attracted to you. Yeah, if you do that, you're fucking trash. Um, that's that's <laughs> and that's that's just my thing. To 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 fake depression, right? That's like you're you Gabe's out. Gabe's out. <laughs> Faking <laughs> depression is a dangerous game because like you're crying wolf and especially when 
Because I knew this one girl, and what was it? Middle school, always used to say, like, she's depressed and all this stuff. Then opened up, and she was like, yeah, I did it for attention. Not, like, later in life, like, that same fucking year. And so it kind of became a thing of, like, it made me not believe other people who were depressed, right? And Mm -hmm. also it made me, like, I didn't really want to help out much. Because, like, sorry, my bad. Back to the thing what I was saying. People who, if you... To, to fake depression, you can actually fuck yourself up and make yourself depressed. Because some, some people will tell a lie, they'll play it out, right? Yeah. Some people tell a lie and they act it out. And, like, what you do becomes a habit, right? Mm. And so I think, like, like, it takes eight days to, to make a habit, 30 days to break one, something mm. like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. And so if you... Because girls who do that, like, especially 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 in relationships. You know, like, I, actually, I'm going to stop saying, like, because I've seen people, both, like, both genders do it. But, like, I did, I did see more girls in high school. I'll, I'll say girls for now, like, to, to do that, especially being in a relationship, to be around the person every day. The reason you're faking to being, being sad is so that they stay around you, right? Yeah. So the more that they're around you, the more that you're doing it. The, wow. you, you build that habit. Damn. And then that habit starts to expand to, like, oh, shit, I'm actually sad. <laughs> and then this is like, fuck. Yo, that's crazy. I never really yeah, thought about I that. I never thought about Damn, it. That's, <laughs> what, a, what an interesting perspective. <laughs> that, that never really crossed my mind. Wow. So... Back on what you said about self-diagnosis, like, most people do that. Like, can you expand more on that? Like, is there, like, is it usually accurate in a sense? Or um, I think so. Based on your experience? Hey, that, that, that was such an interesting perspective. My bad, man. I'm <laughs> it's not like, good. Totally no, no, no. Crazy. I honestly agree with that. It was really, like... I, I never really thought about that, but it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's mind-blowing. That's the best way to yeah, put yeah, it. Yeah. It's mind-blowing. Yeah. But, but answer the game's question, my bad. No, no, no. no. Gabe's question? Um, so it's... when you talked about self-diagnosis, because you're like, okay, some people, like, Using an excuse like, oh, I guess I'm self-diagnosed. Okay. Can you, like, expand more on that topic-ish in a way? Like, is it usually, like, accurate or do you, like... Okay. All right, I see what you mean. Okay, so... um, I think so. So there are some people who self-diagnose, but, like... the So the inaccurate self-diagnosing, right, is that somebody... You have some people who go to a therapist mm-hmm. and, or, or a psychologist. They're the one that... They go to a psychologist try to like get the like not get the diagnosis but talk to the psychologist psychologist says yeah you're not depressed you're just sad right now but in their mind they think no i'm depressed something's wrong with me yeah. and then like so some self diagnoses are the person genuinely thinks that something is wrong with them mm-hmm. and like what you think is what you believe and what you believe is what you become and so that that right there like that's that that self diagnosis becomes an actual diagnosis and like it's not healthy to self diagnose because you you're not you're not experienced in the like field of stuff like that. Like if a lot of stuff has happened to you and you're, you're noticing like, Oh, I don't want to go out as much, things like that. You should definitely talk to somebody, but don't, don't diagnose yourself because you're going to start to play into the diagnosis. Okay. And, um, the other part of the self diagnosis, you have people who for biggest thing I've seen is anxiety. A lot of people say like, Oh, I'm anxi- I'm anxious. And like, I think self diagnosis has become a thing of it's, it's almost cute. That's how people see it. That's not how I see it, but it's like, people like depression, anxiety. Um, let's see. I'm mean, honestly those those two are like are the ones that are pretty much hey, the most seen popular as, right now. Yeah, the most popular because people are like, oh, I when when I do this, I feel this way. I'm anxious. Or when I feel, when I do this, I feel this way. Like I, I, like I'll go out and talk to somebody. Oh no, I don't want to talk to them. I'm, I'm I'm too anxious or I'm too scared to ask for this. And it's like it could just be you're not comfortable in the environment. You're not fucking anxious. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I just self self diagnosis. It, it's not it's not healthy, and like it it becomes like a trend. That's where it gets me because a lot of you have a lot of people who will say like I'm depressed, things like that. And when you're talking like, oh, you ever been to psychologist, therapist? No, how the fuck you? How do you know you're depressed? <laughs> it's like, oh, I just know it, bro. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like all right, well, fade away. That's funny. Okay, so. Another question for you. So in high school, like, even though we hung out together, we we still have very different friend groups. Yeah. Like, for for example, like, you know, this is not a, a like, a, um... Attack. An, not an attack, but, oh, like, well, this, it's not well. a, uh, an insult to drama kids, for example. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now I was a drama kid. Fuck drama kids. <laughs> but, um, in a, in a very serious sense, because I, I don't make a lot of jokes to you, but... Huh? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go some water. Okay. By the way, we just want to say we love drama kids. Like, I know. <laughs> Keep listening to our podcast. Like, it, it, per- kids personally, it depends for me, but it's I just find not. <laughs> but um, what I want to say, so like I said, for us, like for you know, oh, Jab- Jabril, Jabril, Gabe, and I, we all hung out. I'm good. 
Jabril, Gabe, and I, we all, we all hung out together in high school, but, you know, when, when we were separate, we, had, we each had our individual friend groups that we hung out with. So, for example, for, like, Jabril, he, he was part of the drama club. And for me personally, I had an ex-girlfriend who was a part of the drama club, too. And one thing she told me a lot was, like, a lot of the kids are depressed. So I kind of want to, uh, you know, expand on that, saying, like, as someone who's, like, not really depressed, for example, is it bad to be put in that environment with a whole bunch of other depressed kids? Or people, kids who say they are depressed? Mm-hmm. And then even for you, like, how was that experience, like, compared, I guess, from <clears throat> hanging out with us to come hanging out with the kids who were depressed? Yeah, okay. So and I know there's a lot of questions to ask you, but... Oh, uh, that's good, that's yeah. good. Let's, so I'm, I'm going to go with the first one, which was, do you think, like, being around the, the depressed kids, right? Yeah, I guess your environment. What is it like to be around an environment like that? If, if you're already depressed and you're around depressed people, I mean... It's not like math. It shit just doesn't cancel out. You're <laughs> you're still depressed, but it's it's comforting to be around somebody else who is depressed sometimes because it's just like they understand what you're going through. Because yeah. you talk to a normal person about this, like you can see on their face like they get shook or like they'll, they they won't know what to say. Someone who is going through what you're going through, they can give you advice and stuff like that. But it also can play into a catalyst because a lot of the problems that I had. So the problems I had with some of the people in drama, right, is that they would. <clears throat> Uh, Ooh, fuck. Woo! That's a good one, too. I'll admit. He said, woo! That's a good <laughs> woo! one. But the problem I have with some of the drama kids is that um, they kind of enable each other's depression. They make, like, we all, everybody, made, we made jokes, we made raps about suicide, stuff like that. And, but, like, when, when, it, when it actually came down time to, like, talk about it, like, when we got serious, we'd be like, okay, like, this is how we can solve it. These are ways we can do that, right? But you have kids who would be, like, they're depressed, but they aren't doing anything about it. And it's not necessarily that, like they don't have the options too, and it's not like their parents aren't supportive of them. They're, they're just, they get so used to it. And if you hang around them, you know, like you start to get into, you, you sink in with them. They don't, there, there, there are different types of, I'll say there are two types of depressed people. Actually, let's see. All right, three types of depressed people. Mm-hmm. You have depressed person one. This is, this is a person who is depressed, but they're working on themselves. They are trying, they're actively trying to like get out, even if their depression is terrible and they've had multiple attempts and stuff like that. The fact is that they're still trying. So if you hang around them, they can give you advice, but them giving you advice also helps them learn about themselves. So it's a it's a good thing to be around. The second type of person, second type of depressed person, and this is just my opinion. You have the people who they're they're depressed, but they don't want to do anything about it. And it's, again, it's not that they can't, like, because I'm, again, like, I, I'm, I'm diagnosed with major depression. Yeah. So, it's not like they can't do it, it's just that they won't. So, so it's more like they kind of accept their fate? They, they kind of accept their fate, and it's like, it's, but then again, like, um, when it comes to depression, it gets, it does get hard to do stuff, because, like, you, you start to get into that mindset, I'm going to accept this, but there, there are times, like, okay, well, fuck, I'll talk about the diagnosis stuff later, but there are times where you, you can be... You'll be motivated to do things, and when you're motivated, that's when you need to get the most done. That's when you need to look at yourself and be like, "What? What am I doing? What is my patterns and stuff like that?" But the people who don't do that, they just they kind of accept like, "Okay, I'm always going to be depressed. There's nothing I can do. What's the point of working on it?" They then become the third group, which is these are these are the depressed kids you do not want to hang around. Like, I'll probably we'll probably get a lot of shit for this, but there yes, there are some people you just should not help. And I truly believe that. And this is this is coming wow. from somebody with like a very wow. big heart. Like if I see every, I was everybody's fucking therapist in high school. <laughs> like, and there are some of them I stopped talking to them because I realize it's not like they're coming to me for the same advice. I mean, because some of them were, you know. But I noticed they were getting better. You had some people who would come to me for advice would get worse, and then it's not, I don't have a problem with like debating against me. I like debates and stuff like that, right? But yeah. when I hang around them. I'll ask them, like, oh, what do you want to do? Like, oh, I don't know. And they'll just start saying how they're so, like, sad, stuff like that. And they'll, you'll become sad with them. You start to do what they do and stuff like that. And they'll see it, but they won't say anything about it. Because they, 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 would, they would rather, instead of being alone in that and just dealing with it, they'd rather have somebody there with them. Which, that, I think that becomes an attachment issue, but... Yeah, because they're depressed. kind of like alone together in a way. Like Yeah, you're, you're alone, but you're together. So it's kind of like, it's, it's kind of like a, almost like a... I don't want to say you versus the, like, y'all versus the world type of thing, but it's just, it's, this person understands me the most, and they're going through what I'm going through, and it it feels good to have somebody there. Yeah. But they don't necessarily, because 
they may not the one person may not want the other one to get better necessarily because it's like if you're in a better place you may not be around me anymore and so, so oh wow they, wow. they begin to so it's kind of like taking advantage of this. Yeah, it's it's kind of like taking advantage of, and like everybody, you you will everybody will find that person who like, no matter what you do, like you just can like nothing you do is good enough for them, stuff like that, and that, that, especially when it comes to depression, like that's, you 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 cannot cure someone else's depression. They need to do it themselves. You can help them, you can aid them, but don't fully involve yourself in it because you can end up becoming depressed trying to help a depressed person. Wow. I don't know. Wow. So it's kind of like trying to change, it's like it's trying to change someone's beliefs. You can't change someone's beliefs. Yeah. You can only like aid in the assistance, right? But in the end, it's up to them to if they want to do that or not. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so to my second question, so what was it like hanging out with people who were like like that, and then to more happier people? <laughs> like what 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 was like that? Like I guess. Sometimes when I hung around, so it would be both groups. Like so, let's say like hanging on you guys, right? It's happy. Yeah. Sometimes like my mood would drop, and I'm like, damn, I want to go with my depressed friends because like my mood's down. It's not like they'll make me feel better, but it's like, they're like, oh shit, my mood was like this too. And then you guys can all throw out stories and shit like that. And it becomes like, it becomes fun, but at the same time, you're still, <laughs> you're still fucking sad, but you're like <laughs> with other people. It's, it's a weird thing. And then, uh, but hey, you know, my happy friends, like, it's, you, you guys literally gave me like the, the love I have for life because it's seeing, seeing other people work towards other things. Like, hang, hanging around somebody who's better than you will always, like, it'll always improve yourself. Someone who's always working on themselves. Like, you guys are always fucking working on yourselves. Always. Thank you. And, like, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, always. So, it's, hanging around you guys was, re- was rejuvenating. Was rejuvenating. I thought I'm sorry for saying that word right. But, like, I felt like I could breathe, right? And yeah. then, going around to press people, it's, you're dealing with your own things, too. And then you also have to deal with their stuff. And you have to... It's almost like before you hang out with, like, like other people who are depressed, you have to get yourself in a mindset of, okay... I don't even know what the mindset is. I just have to prepare myself. And it's not like what's, what's saying is... It's not like what, what's being said is shocking to me. What's being said to me is heavy. It's just like... Like you know what's coming? You, you, you know what's coming. And, like, if, if you prepare for it, it's easier to deal with. And, like, yeah. Oh. Like... Uh, I can definitely say like hanging with the hanging with the sad kids was it was it was very it was still like like that 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 was still fun it did did but that did lead me down like another path I necessarily didn't want to go down. So it had its pros and it had its cons too. Yeah, because okay. you have yeah people who understand you and, and know how to comfort you like the best way because they go through it. Yeah, yeah, but the same like the cons were you weren't necessarily with other people who were trying to better themselves. You're just, you're all sad together. And that's, it feels good to do that. But eventually, one of you guys has to take the step to, like, pull somebody out of there or pull yourself out of there. It's hard. It's hard, yeah. yeah. Wow. And the, see, for me, that's crazy because, like, I guess I've always had really high energy. So anytime I were, I was around, like, depressed people, for example, I would never tell the depressed because I'm just always so bouncy and, like, bubbly. So I'd always, just, I, was, I guess my energy would just kind of bring their energy up too so i never really realized you know because i never I, I was in high school i was like i was never i was never very serious i was more i was always like joking around and taking life like so lightly <laughs> yeah yeah so i never really had a conversation like that yeah so so that's why like for example like a lot of times when people were depressed i never really realized it because i was over here living in like Candyland, for example and then my friends were living in like you know like in in, in like a dark world not but, I, <laughs> but, I, but I, I'm, I'm over here like pulling off like mushrooms to eat like not mushrooms like fucking like uh, marshmallows to eat off like trees and they're pulling off like you know like sites like to like, like, to, like <laughs> yeah yeah so so it, it, was, it was always really crazy to like I, I guess hear about that like I said not even for me like I've never really been that sad ever I mean I, like maybe like after a breakup but that's just like temporarily yeah so I've never yeah. I've never really been in prolonged sadness before in my life yeah same here because I was always a person that was like optimistic about the future. Yeah, all like, I like, gave to you, yeah. I just try to find the like, find the best sense. Like, oh, today's horrible. I'll be better tomorrow. Like, I just, I grew up in an environment where, I just, I guess you could say I was just happy because I mean, of course, like, I know you had like your parents divorced. My parents never divorced. Yeah. Like, I guess I just felt like so thankful for everything coming from a Latino family which is a typical to they come from another country that works so hard for it 
So I felt like, okay, I just got to do something with my life. I always felt like I had something to prove. Not only because, like, for me and my family, but I guess for, like, my demograph. Because, yeah. you know, they, what they say about, like, <clears throat> minorities and stuff like that, which is sad to hear. But I want to prove that, like, well, see, those are not just, you know, drug dealers, <laughs> border hopping. <laughs> so that's yeah. my that's my two cents, though. That's my little story. Which I think I talk about when one of the podcasts I was alone, but you know, yeah. So, so another question for you, bro. Does does the type of music you listen to help depression? And does it like <laughs> can it can it can it also like can it, so can music aid in in making depression worse? But can it also do the exact opposite and like not really get rid of it, but also like defend it off for you? Um, yeah, yeah. So okay. I've come to pass for us, my dear. <laughs> the music you listen to, my dad has always told me this from like young age, and like the music you listen to influences the fuck out of you, like a lot, you know? Because everybody, everybody listens to different type of music. Some people, them listening to sad music for some reason makes them happy, and for them it's so weird, but that'll be their thing. But if they listen to, they can listen to like rap, and like the certain certain songs in rap can be like emotional yeah that can make them sad and so like it, it depends on what you listen to but the words in the song are very important because like you you have people so you have people like x right yeah and like i like <laughs> i really hope i don't get i love i fucking love x you know yeah i don't really listen to him as much anymore and because like when i listened to him a lot i was in a very very dark place like i was not i wasn't happy and I'm, I mean, I'm, I can't say I'm 100% happy now, but I realize that, like, you, the music, if you listen to depressing music, you're feeding the depressive side of yourself, you know? Like, yeah. like, like, sitting in a dark room, listening to sad music is, sometimes you need that. Like, I'm not saying, because solitude is always okay. Solitude and isolation, solitude is okay because you're taking time for yourself. Isolation, you're taking time away from other people, but it's not a healthy time, it's just... You're just alone for no good reason, and um, sorry, I went, I went off. <laughs> no, it's all good. I, I, I no, we're, we're actually, <clears throat> like us, like we said, we're actually thankful for that you're opening up about it because this is a really tough topic to talk about. Yeah, and like I said, me, Gabe, and I have never really experienced depression like that. Yeah, you know, for like uh, like I said earlier, both of us have always seen it from an outside point of view, so it's interesting to hear someone else like being actually in it. Like, you know? actually like paint a picture for us because like. That, I'm at what, the way you're describing it. I'm like getting more understanding about it. Like, oh, that's how it is. Yeah. So we're actually, like I said, thankful. Thank you for coming. Oh shit, no problem, bro. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so like I said, so the music does. Music it, does. This does make a huge difference. If you are, let's say, okay, if you're, if you are having a bad day, do your best not to listen to sad music. Yeah. Because it, it, it may put you in a better mood for that moment, right? But in the long run, you're, you're, you're telling yourself, when I'm sad. I need to listen to sad music and you become sadder because sometimes of the songs you hear, it's just like, well, fuck, there's no reason. Things like that. Like I've tested, like I've been in a sad mood before and I've gone on 21 Savage. Like, and I, I won't, I will not like let myself listen to sad shit. And eventually like my mind starts to take over and like, like the, the pace of the it's faster pace, which is like, I guess it's, for me, it's, I associate that with like moving, boxing, running shit like that. Mm-hmm. And it, it makes it, it, it doesn't make me get out of that mindset, but it, it gives me enough clarity to be like, okay, oh, okay, like this, like I'm I'm good, like you know what I mean, like I'm I'm stable. Okay, that makes sense. But music music plays tremendously into into mental health, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's funny because I remember I, I used to have, I used to have the, an ex girlfriend. The one talking about who was in drama, she was depressed. Yeah. But I never really like she's talking about it, but I never really understood. But I remember one time she like shared me her music, and I like. I started getting sad. I was like, I was like, yo, what the heck is this? Like, what the, why the hell am I getting sad for? Like, because it was so weird because I never really listened to music like that. Yeah. And, th- and that's kind of a big reason why I'm not a big fan of, like, 21 Pots and stuff like that. Like, yeah. no offense to, like, anybody, like, any 21 <laughs> Pots fans, but it's just, like, their music just makes me sad, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's not, like, for me, it's not comforting to feel because it, 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 like, it feels, like, it feels so weird and awkward for me to be in, in, in that type of environment. Cause, Cause, I know my head is it's gonna be like start thinking like like depressing stuff. I remember one time, Hedy Hedy like sent me this song. That's my girlfriend's name, and um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, we were we were walking 
Uh-huh. I mean, I was walking and I was listening to her song and I started feeling self conscious. Like, I thought my self image was trash. Like, I was walking around and I was like, man, people are probably talking about me in their heads. And I was like, and I, and I turned around and I paused my music. I was like, yo, what the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> like, this isn't me. Like, for me, like, in high school, I didn't care. I don't give a fuck what anybody thought about me, you know? Yeah. But I was, when I was listening to music, I did. And it was just so crazy. Like, like me never being depressed and actually hearing that. Like, for me, it was just weird, you know? Yeah. I mean, I don't know, man. Can I ask another question? What? Okay, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, what was no, your question? Right. My story was finished. From, from some of people who haven't, you guys haven't been depressed, right? No, I've never been depressed. What, no. what are your, like, and just be very upfront on, like, like, brutally honest. What are your thoughts on, I don't want to say people who are depressed. I, I want to make it more specific. Uh, this is interesting. I'm, I'm getting, like, excited to talk about this. Hello, <laughs> Ski, <laughs> not gonna lie. What are your thoughts on people who are friends? Okay, all right. What are, what are your what are your thoughts on people who act out on their depression? Now, when I would say act out, I don't mean like they go crazy stuff. That I mean like if they're if they're sad and they're visibly sad and you see that, do is it like a why can't you just be happy type thing or is like. You you understand, but you know it's not a deep understanding. Like what what is your what are your thoughts on that? Sheesh. So so like when you say they act out, it's kind of like a gay person like like acting out they're gay, mm-hmm. like that. So like they're like, Flamboyant. like they're kind of like just way super out there, like to like a point where like annoy somebody like yeah. that type of. Okay. That's like, a, I'm so. That's, that's a very. I'm good so question. depressed. I'm so sad. Oh, so, mm-hmm. uh, so like okay, okay. They're like verbal about it basically. So for me, for me, I, I always thought like. For myself, I'm good. For myself personally, I always felt like, um, how am I gonna word this? Like you should always like your mind. You should always be in control of your mind, no matter what happens. You yeah. know. So for me, example, anytime I was sad, I was be like, stop being sad, and then I'll stop being sad. So that's how for me personally, because that's how I grew up. That's how I thought oh, everybody. You can do that. Everybody's mind was yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so for, for example, like <laughs> what I'm like like, crazy. like when I broke up with like with Haiti, for example. Like after like a couple of days, I was like, Andrew, you can stop being a bitch. Like, it's like it's it's okay. Everything happens for a reason. Just stop being stop, stop being fucking sad and just stop brightening up. And then my mind will start talking out, you know, positive things, and I'll stop being sad. So for me, that's how I thought people worked in high school. You know, because yeah. you know in high school you're very naive. Yeah. You know, as much as you hate to admit it. So for me, when I when I saw someone being so sad, I always thought the back of my head like, why can't just someone, why can't they just tell themselves to not be sad anymore? Like it's so easy, like such an easy fix. Yeah. But I realized that's not how it works. So then anytime I saw someone sad like that, I always thought either one, they just wanted a lot of attention and then they'll stop being sad or two, they just like, they, just, they just, just start thinking positive thoughts yeah. and that should fix the depression. But obviously it didn't work, you know, because <laughs> like, that's how, that's how people work out. Yeah. Wow. Well, my thoughts when someone act out on their depression, it seems like a sense of how can I help them in a sense? Because yeah. I'm like, I'm like Angel. If I if I'm sad, I'd be like, Gabe, stop being a little bitch. Yeah, he's got tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I snap out of it and I'm happy again. Or I'm like, if I'm still sad by tomorrow, I'm like, oh, just find something that'll distract you in a sense, and eventually I'll forget about my sadness. But when I see someone that's sad and continually sad, and talk about it, I'm like, how can I help? If I guess you could say, if you can't help yourself in a sense, I'm not trying to take backlash. I'm not saying like I'm hating on the person on th- that. Always verbal about it, but it's kind of like, how can I help you? Because I don't know how to. Yeah. How can I bring it up? Like, oh, you're you may have depression, but are you really the? De- not necessarily. Like, I'm questioning if you're depressed. It's kind of yeah. like, I don't know how to describe. It. It's like you're depressed. How can I bring it up in the conversation? And it's for me to help you. Yeah. So. Like like in, like can I try to word it for you? Yeah. Like in what way can I? What is. Out of all the options of shit I could say, what is the best thing I could say for you in this moment right now that'll help you in the long run? Stuff yeah, like basically, yeah. It's just, it's really like, just in the sense of mind, I'm like, how, just a lot of questions were in my head, like, how, how, how do you feel? How do you do this, do that? It's just, like I said, it's just a sense of a lot of questions because I'm very, like, I have a very shallow knowledge of it. So that's why I was like, I thought about this for the topic. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's a good question, Dr. Bro. I don't know. For me, like I said, I always just thought people always had control of their mind. Yeah. Like, for example, like, for me, like, if I if I tell myself to be angry, I'll be angry, you know? 
Like that's it's like that. so fucking crazy to me. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, aside from being depressed, what is it like to see someone like it's just so happy? Like, does it, does it seem like it's like a like a dream to you? Like, is it unreal or what? <laughs> so honestly, like when I used to see happy people, like it didn't that thought never really crossed my mind. I'm just like, I just saw it, and it wasn't like a never got jealous or anything. I never got envious of people who were happy because I was very good at myself. I like. I would portray the fact that I was happy a lot. Like, if you, you guys remember me from high school, like, you, there, there was barely a time you see me without a smile on my face. Oh, like yeah. That. And, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, oh, yeah. but when, when it came to, like, I remember when, when, when the, when the okay, before the tar thing, um, yeah. something that would happen in the house, and I'd tell you guys, right? And I would be very, like, I would just, it would just be on my mind all day. I would tell myself, okay, stop thinking about it. Stop. <laughs> If I feel sad, like stop being sad, right? I'm like, no, fuck you. <laughs> it's like, it's like, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna be sad. And the more, like, the more I try to fight that thought, the worse it gets. Yeah, that's so. That's like, like, crazy. Like, it's it's so I have to literally let it happen. Like it's it, I can't just if I if I if I stop it, I'm pushing it to later, right? But if I tell myself to not be sad, you're. Okay, so. Just real quick, like the way the way I see, like the way the mind works, right? Yeah. Is that when you learn something new, you know, and yeah. you keep learning about that thing, you're making a new pathway. Yeah. You're, you're you're forming new connections and things like that, right? Yeah. So when it comes to like, okay, like stop being sad, and you you, you start to think about if you, if you it's okay to think about why you're sad and things like that, but you try to actively fight against you, like okay, I'm not sad, this and that, right? I mean, that when it hits you the connections are going to be that much stronger because you didn't let that emotion happen. So it's a delay reaction? Yeah, okay. it's, it's, it's almost like a delay reaction. That's and like, so interesting. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> um, let me see. I'm trying to, there's a better way I can word this. Like, Is it kind of like waves? Like, you know, like when you're at the beach, the wave comes, and next thing you know, like, comes back and comes stronger and stronger? You know? Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's a pretty good way of describing it. It's like, you're, you'll say, let's say you're a kid and you're sitting, like, right at the edge of the beach, and the yeah. wave fucking hits you in the face. It's like, okay. But, like, let's say a wave comes and you put up, like, a little thing, you know? Like, the darker it gets, the stronger the waves are. Yeah, yeah. So, once it gets too dark, that wave's when it hits you, you can't keep that barrier up anymore. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah that, that's just so interesting to me because like i said it's it, for me I, I always feel like i just always had control of my head so no matter what i say my that's what my, my brain's gonna do you know yeah no so what are some tips you would give for example like someone that is within those three people you described like what tips would you give okay. in order for them to like progressively get better in general get over yourselves and stop being depressed just kidding <laughs> <laughs> so depression isn't you. real uh <laughs> nah. um so <laughs> My best advice for those people, right? One, find an activity. Like, if you're if you okay, if you are depressed and you're in high school, what you should do, join something. Join something as as a club, like like drama. Like yeah, drama. Um, so I did drama, wrestling, fo- fuck football. I did football, fuck football, but football's fun. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was a linebacker. It wasn't fun for me. <laughs> just what, just what I gotta say. Once I was playing football against someone, it was like in front of um one of our friends' apartment complex. We're playing, you know, those tackle football. I tried to tackle Jabril, and he literally just carried me on his back the whole <laughs> way from one end zone to the next end zone. Well, it's not actual. Zone, w- was, was that just birthday party? Yeah, that was just oh, birthday party. <laughs> I tried to tackle Jabril so hard. Then the next time I tried to tackle him again, he just stiff armed me. And I, <laughs> I had, you know. Uh, whiplash and I fell back. Yeah, that's how I knew it. Like, huh? <laughs> I'll never play football with him again. We're <laughs> <laughs> back to the tips. I apologize. Yeah. It's so good. It's so good. So, number one, so find an activity. Like, should it be an activity that stretches yourself? Um, or should it be one that just yeah. doesn't really matter? It, honestly, it doesn't. I think it does matter, but it depends on the level. If you are, let's say, if you're, you can tell how depressed you are. Like, like I don't give a fuck. What the, if somebody can tell me is otherwise I won't agree with it. I'm not gonna. You you know yourself. You know how sad you are. So if you are extremely sad, right? It, you may not want to get out of your comfort zone. And I understand that. And if you don't do that, that's fine. If you like to draw, join the art club. Draw after school because you're gonna meet other people who are in the. You're gonna meet other people who are just like you, or sometimes like even even worse than you. Like meeting somebody 
when I joined drama and I met somebody worse off than myself, it made me appreciate myself a lot more. Like, I know that sounds, like, kind of fucked like, up. Like, but, like, like, <laughs> but it's, like, it's not, not like, oh, like, I'm better than you. It's not like that at all. It's, like, wow, what I have could be worse. Yeah. And then when you have that thought, it's, like, what I have could be worse, so what I have could be better. It's oh. it's, 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 it's a perspective change. Um, activities. All, you, you should have have a friend that you can talk to anytime, but do not make the friend your therapist. What, what I mean by that is... It, it's everybody needs that person to talk to like it's okay it's 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 perfectly fine but when i say make that friend your therapist like if the only reason and this is me picking a bone because this shit happens to me if the <laughs> only reason your friends hit you up <laughs> it's the vent and then after that you don't hear from them they wouldn't even ask how you're doing like you're a fucking therapist like you should charge you should start charging them you know what i mean <laughs> like that's it <clears throat> if, if they if they hit you up for stuff like that it's it's okay to, to chat out with them. It's it's okay to like sit like you shouldn't like push somebody away just because they are depressed, you yeah. know. But um, fuck, sorry, I lost. Was, you shouldn't push somebody away, somebody away because they are depressed. I don't that that wouldn't be a good thing. But I think that if you make somebody your therapist, you put you're putting so much pressure on them because like okay, so you guys are like generally like happy people, shit like that, right? Yeah. Like Some of the stuff so. that I talk about is kind of heavy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. To me, I'm just talking. Like, like it's to me, like, it is not... Ha- I'm having a normal conversation, you know? But when you're talking to somebody who's not depressed, to, to a depressed person, it's not even... I don't even think it's a... It, it is a selfish thing, but they don't even realize it because in their mind, they're having a conversation with you, yeah. you know? Sometimes. They're, they're having a conversation with you. And... But to, to someone who is, like, able-minded and healthy, I guess, it's the thing of, like, oh, well, like, you may feel uncomfortable... You may feel like there's a pressure on you that you have to do things to help this person. They'll do it, stuff like that. It's unhealthy, unnecessary pressure that can really, like, I I can say it 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 can make it can make you depressed. Or it can just honestly just kind of fuck up your view of the world. Wow. And so interesting. Um, another advice, dude. I don't care what y'all say. The reason depression gets worse is because you think you can handle yourself. If you if you can if you can work out stuff like that then cool you know like and yeah and that if that if that is what gets you like out of that that's good get a therapist <laughs> get a therapist get a psychologist like having that friend is cool you need someone who is able to treat you and when you go in there to talk to them like it's it gets hard to talk about it sometimes especially with like if the person's an adult or you're just not comfortable with them but you you can slowly open up therapy is not you not therapy is not a race. You're, you slowly open yourself up to the point where you're comfortable. And then when you get comfortable, it you, more things will start to spill out. And you'll start to realize stuff that you didn't even realize beforehand. Wow. wow. So uh, keep keep in contact with your friends. That's that, that's a big thing. That, that That's a really big thing. Like, I'm terrible with contact. Like, that's just, like, that's just who I am. And I noticed, like, because... When I noticed the friends who I did, used to hang out with before, right? Yeah. Like, 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 all like the base of the group that we had, shit like that. Yeah. I lost contact with a lot of them, and those spots were filled by people who weren't necessarily good for. Okay, so let me rephrase what I said. The people who are good to you in your life, like, keep them. Yeah, and it's, you don't keep them for a selfish reason. You be good to them too, because yeah, I'd be fuck that. If somebody, if you're good to somebody and they're not good to you, trash. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> but you, 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 you keep them because it's, it's a. That's that. That is. That's what you should be. Not striving to. Yeah, not fuck that. Yeah, that's what you're striving to be. You're, tra- you're striving to be, what they are trying to become, which is a better version of themselves. So you should always become a better version of yourself, not a better version of them, but of yourselves. Um. Let's see. Limit how much you hang around other people. Limit how much you hang around toxic people. I don't say other because every de- every depressive person isn't toxic. That, that 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 right there is just not true. But limit your time around toxic people. People who you feel like drain your energy, stuff like that. Um, That's pretty good, man. Yeah. Oh. So and just just a quick little recap over here. Oh my bad. You want to say something else? I want to say uh, one thing about relationships. <laughs> If you are depressed and you, you're not in a spot for a relationship, don't get in one. Like you, you, you need to be alone because you're going. You can you can hurt someone. You can seriously like hurt somebody by like being depressed, not taking care of it, 
because then you put it, it becomes an expectation on the other person to take care of you. And like, you're not a fucking child, you know? So, wow. Whoa. So, um, just a quick little recap so you guys can just, you guys can notice the whole thing. Um, one, you said, um, what was your first tip again? I just slipped my mind. I just had oh, shit. Uh, find an activity. activity. Yeah, find activity. an activity. Um, make sure. What's it called? Friends and other therapists. Yeah, yeah make, make sure. Make yeah, sure so the have... first one is um, find an activity. The second one is find a friend, but don't, don't make that friend your therapist. Yeah. The third one is to. Um, look for a therapist. Look, look for <laughs> actual therapist, yeah. Your fourth one is to make sure that you are good to people who are good to you, right? Yes. And keep Fit, them around. Yeah, keep them around. Fifth person is to limit, limit yourself around toxic people. And the sixth one is be careful with relationships, right? Be, careful, be very careful with relationships. Okay, so it's actually funny because our Q&A question today, we only had one because I feel like it was such a touchy, touchy subject. It was actually about that. So the question, you want to read it off? Because I kind of memorized yeah. it a little bit. So uh, I'll just read it off just okay. because uh, why not? <laughs> we want to make sure that I say in his room. The question we got was, how do you tell your friend that their toxic relationship is affecting your mental health? So then, so then uh, be- before we get into this, uh, to this answer, um, after this, we we'll to take a quick little break just to give our like mouths and our uh, emotions a break. I don't know something, but yeah, oh yeah, like, 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 we need to get some water and stuff or some food. But um, yeah. So what do, what do you think, Jabro? We'll, we'll like we'll, we'll go Jabro, Gabe, and myself, or whatever. Sounds good. All right. So uh, I remember when I was in Peachford, I actually did have to have that exact same conversation with somebody, and I wow. just honestly I just kind of said I'm like, hey. You need not to throw your problems on me. I don't have a problem helping with your shit, but, like, you can't keep putting it on me. And then, like... Like, like when I say putting problems on, like, this person, like... And, I like, they, they, they are a good person. I'm not, like, in no way, shape, or form, like, bashing this person. This is, like, they're a good friend. But stuff, like... They'll be like, oh, hey, come over, right? Mm-hmm. I come over, and they their stuff is going on. They're not telling me. So when I get there, as soon as I open the door, I'm just bombarded with, like... They're like, okay... This is going on, this is going on, this is going on, this is going on. And then, like, you're just kind of expected to solve it. And it, it's like, what? You know? Uh, so the conversation, the best, honestly, the best way to say it is to be straightforward. If they're, if they're younger than you, uh, you, you have to let them down. Definitely, you definitely have to let them down easier because you can make them feel like a, a bigger burden. But you can let them be like, hey, the best way to say it on this is like, hey, um... Keep in mind, I am a blunt individual myself. So, yeah. if you're talking to somebody who's not blunt, it may not work. But just be like, "Hey, I uh, let them know, like, be like, hey, I enjoy talking to you. Let let let, let, let them know, like, you so start off on a positive note, right? Yeah, pause, start off on a positive note. Just be like, I enjoy talking to you. All these things, but um, sometimes, like, I don't think the way that you do, you know, and I, I don't think I necessarily understand everything. So. I have I don't have an issue with you talking to me, but it's starting to to affect me in a negative way, yeah. and like with that they can kind of infer from themselves. If they if 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 you if you talk to somebody and their reaction is rude, they go off on you, things like that. That's not a person you need to keep around because if they care about you the way you care about them, they would understand and they'll back off a little bit. They won't feel funny. They shouldn't feel uncomfortable. They shouldn't feel any type of different. It's just they just pull back and then come back in. Interesting. Wow. What about you, Gabe? Well, what, what, is you, what do you think you should do? So let's say a person is talk- toxic and it's and is, and is affecting your mental health. What would okay. you do? Well, it's kind of like a 50-50 thing when I think of a friendship, of course, because when you put when you, when I put... 50% of my share in my friendship, I expect 50% back. Yeah. So, like, Jabril said it best, like, I would just be straight up, like, you, you're you're giving me a lot of shit, and it's really affecting how I feel. Like, it's very toxic, and I just need, like, you know, maybe t- I'll take a step back from this. Like, I just need time for myself. And if it's not getting any better, then I think there's just, I just need to cut them off at that sense. Ooh, I like that song. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just to the sense, like, if, if it's really affecting me, like, it's making me sad, like, or, like, holding me back from achieving my true potential, then, sorry, I had to cut you off. Yeah. Because I, I just want to make myself the best I could be, and if you're not going to allow that, then I had to cut you off. I'm sorry. Yeah. But yeah, I just want to say I love everyone else. Haha. <laughs> what about you, Angel? Man, that's a, that's a good one, guys. Um, I know, it's a tough question. <laughs> it's a question. It's a tough question. Um... Honestly, me personally, I'd probably just do what Jabril did. 
but I, I am too a blunt person, so I would just be like, yo, like, your problems are, like, way too much for me, so I'm, I'm going to need to take a step back from you. You know, that's what I would say. Yeah. Just because I don't think it's fair to allow some. I don't think it's fair to allow someone to affect your mental health. Yeah. I, no. just, I just don't think it's fair. I, I mean, I no, no matter how close you are to them, like, you should always protect your mental health, like, to, like, an utmost priority, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know, I, I, if, I were, if I were in that situation, I'd just be like, hey, look, like, you know, like, it, it obviously would be difficult for me because, you know, obviously, if it's a person that you're close to, it's going to be even more, it's going to be even more difficult. Oh, yes. But uh, just me personally, I would just be like, hey, look, I know this is going to be kind of tough to talk to, but um, right now your problems are way too much for me. Like, they're affecting the way I think and it's not, and not in a positive way. So right now, I'm just need to take a break from you. And then take a break and see how it goes and you feel a lot better. And then you can come back and talk to them in a couple months and then see how they are. And if they're still, like, somewhat toxic, then I just don't think it's some, something you should keep by in your life. I agree, yeah. Wow. That was a very good session so far, guys. I just want to say yeah, that. We talked for a smooth hour without Shit, talking, man. without stopping. So <laughs> oh, wow. we're going to take a quick little break, and then we're going to move on to our, our last topic of today. All right. All right, and we are back. And what topic we're going to be talking about now is how to reduce insecurities. Oh, man, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> oh, <laughs> boy. <laughs> Just, just, just uh, so yeah sorry we're like laughing about it because we just came from a very like good break you say we had some good chicken good water good chicken. good takis yeah. you know i had good ham uh, we can't say the same for your I, I, I thought you said i got good head i was like what the heck what? <laughs> what at, well that's crazy so insecurities Oh, uh, here we go down this dangerous path of insecurity. All right, before we start, I also got a definition for that. Okay, it's definition so, for insecurities. Insecurity, the definition is uncertainty or anxiety about oneself, lack of confidence. Yep. So, yeah. They are not ready. <laughs> Yo. They are not ready for this about Yeah, this, oh, yeah, this is going to be like a two hour long podcast, bro. This, <laughs> this shit is. Hey, here I'm going to say straight up, this is probably going to be the bo- best podcast we got right here. Oh, dude, insecurities. Oh, my. All right. <laughs> let, us, let it out. Let the beast out. Okay, so, I, I, like, where do you start with this? I don't even fucking know. <laughs> you can start anywhere, honestly. Um, So would you say that insecurity go hand in hand with, like, lack of mental health? Good mental health, low health mental health? Insecurity and mental health are, like... They're fuck handy. They're the same hand. Like it's, yeah. it's fingers on the same hand, dude. Okay, like if you're insecure, I'm really sorry for what I'm about to say. All right, so insecure people. He really doesn't care. Huh? What? Uh, <laughs> I don't. Care. <laughs> hey, I just want to say to bro Williams, you know. Oh fuck! I was gonna, you know, you know what? Like those at the in the commercial, they always do like that quick talk. You know, <laughs> <laughs> they're like be advised. He's not responsible for that. <laughs> like, right. do not drink, eat. Do, 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 do. <laughs> all right. Basically, this is our discussion. Go. Right. So, insecurity and depression go hand in hand. Insecurity, insecurities and mental health go right in, hand in hand because, like, the most insecure people are usually the worst off. Oh. Dance break. Okay, there you go. <laughs> but so insecure people are usually the worst off when it comes to these things because when you have no sense of self, you either you so you do two things, right? Yeah. You a you latch on to other people who are themselves and then you become them, right? Yeah. Or insecure people, they 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 don't they don't want anybody to be they don't want to feel like anybody's better than them. Insecure people are people who tend to compare themselves to other people. Uh, the low, the low confidence part. Low conf. Okay, so man, low confidence is such a hard. Low, thing low to confidence go, go goes hand in hand with depression too. Just insecurities in general, because so when you're insecure, right, you like, oh, I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know how I feel about that. You're very indecisive. So, insecure people make irrational decisions. That's just that's the way it is. Like they may feel a lot, but they make irrational decisions, right? Those irrational decisions lead them down a path that is not the best one because they're like, they cannot simply comprehend why the fuck things are going on. Because they're so insecure about shit that it's just like, they, I don't even know how to explain it. <laughs> it's like, they kind of like need a sense of control, but they yes. can't really control it. It's insecure, I've noticed insecure people are very controlling. Because, they, especially if in the relationships, because they do not want anyone to be like around you. Because like, oh, this person would take me away from them, so take them away from me, stuff like that. Yeah. And the reason it goes hand in hand with depression is because when you don't know yourself, when you don't know who you are... And a lot of people, everybody's still figuring figuring out who they are. Like adults are, you know. Yeah, of but course. Yeah. They, they, they still have process. they still have some type of they still have some type of blueprint. Insecure people don't have that blueprint. When you don't have that blueprint, 
you start to feel sad because you're like, why don't people like me? Why don't people want to be around me? Or why am I not as liked as the next person? That that will trigger depression. When you mix depression and insecurities together, that's what leads to people. You know how we, how we say like, you have people who fake being mm-hmm. depressed to keep you there? Insecure people, they'll actually be depressed, right? But they'll also fake it sometimes. So like they know what to say to make you react a certain way because they want you to be around them and shit like that. Like insecure, it, it falls hand in hand. Wow. I would just say that people like... They could be insecure, like, but they're not necessarily depressed. Yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. There, there, there are people, <clears throat> there are people who are insecure. They don't know about themselves, but even if they're not trying to figure out who they are, they're not. Nec- some of them are not necessarily depressed. They're just, they're just very like, they are just extremely insecure. Like people who are insecure about body shape, they'll wear like black clothes, shit like that. But they're still oh, wow, like, I agree with that. yeah, yeah, no, like people. Pe- so the darker the clothes people wear, usually the more insecure they are. That, that's usually like, like dark clothes and makes you look more slimmer. Damn, yeah. I love wearing like pink and like, like like a light beige. Oh, Sorry, continue. I yeah. just now started like to wear like like this is like the first time I wore black shirt in a minute, but I like wearing light clothes now because like I'm not as insecure about my body as I, I never knew that. Before. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, wow. it, 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 black makes you look like slim stuff like that. Um, but. <clears throat> fuck, what was the question? I'm sorry, Gabe. I, <laughs> um, I said like basically like, can you be? Insecure but not depressed. Yeah, you can be insecure without, without depression. You, it, that's, being that, ins- I was being high school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was a lot of people in high school. A lot of people like popular girls. They they weren't necessarily depressed, but they don't know who they are, so they're going to do whatever they can to keep their popular name up, stuff like yeah. that. I, no, I agree. Yeah, because I feel like insecurity could go like in different senses. Yeah, or forms. Yeah, this, this topic is so hard to talk about. Because I feel like everyone For has me, insecurities. Really, like not everyone shows it. Like, not everyone overcomes it, or people do. Like, I don't think you can necessarily overcome, but you can reduce it in a sense. Mm, I don't agree with that. What are, your, what are your thoughts on that? You don't think you can, you don't think you can overcome secu- insecurities? No, you, you, say, you said you can't overcome it. Yeah, I said you can't overcome it. You can only reduce it, because, like, sometimes... Uh, like, I, you I, can, I think you can, over, I think can, you can overcome it. Yeah. Get in the fucking gym. <laughs> <laughs> Get a sick fucking pump and you'll be good. All right? Yo, <laughs> that's facts. So yeah, debate. <laughs> no, I'm good. I want to hear you out though. So so uh, you can. I think you can over. Yeah, you 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 can definitely reduce insecurity, right? But yeah. I think you don't overcome it too though. Over hell, I'll give you a perfect example. My eczema, like my eczema is fucking terrible, but never stopped me from doing what I wanted to do. People always make jokes about it, stuff like that. Like that was an insecurity I overcame at a young age, kind of because I had to though. You know yeah. what I mean? And I think. It's not even, like, I can truly say to you, like, it is not reduced. It's like, I'm not scared to take my shirt off around people just yeah. because of eczema. Like, I'm not afraid to talk to girls because of eczema, stuff like that. Yeah. Like, I'll still do all that. And it's not, I don't ever think, oh, I shouldn't wear this because of my eczema. I'm like, if I got it, fuck it. Like, yeah. I can't do anything about it, stuff like that. You know, like, I mean, I, I can, I'm doing it, but it's just so severe that it's something I think, I just think it's permanent. So, like, I'm working on it, but if it doesn't go away, I'm fine. You know? Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. I never saw it in that kind of sense because I don't know. I don't know how to like. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> you honestly left me speechless on that because that is a good example to put. Cause I feel like sometimes like some people like, for example, I guess your eczema. Mm-hmm. I guess they're just like, oh, they it always stays in, like in the back of their head or something like that. They're like, oh, but my eczema. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. What, are you, what are your experiences with insecurities, Angel? Damn, man. I ain't gonna lie. That's the reason why I started working out. That's funny. But, um, I don't know. I guess for me, it was just like a lack of confidence. Yeah. But, like, but, but confidence is just, it's just a decision, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I, I can agree I with that. that. Yeah. You, you want to be confident, just say, I'm confident. It's kind of like what you were saying earlier when you said, like, if you keep telling yourself you're depressed, you're going to be depressed. Yeah. But if you tell yourself every morning, I'm going to be confident, you be confident. Sounds like a law of attraction. I like it. Yeah, but I definitely think it is a decision. Yeah. Like, it, let's be real. For example, like, if someone put, it, put, like, put a gun to your head and right, it was like, all right, every girl you talk, every girl you talk to, talk to you to be hella confident, right? And hit a gun to your head, of course, give me mad confident, right? <laughs> like, I try to die. Like, like I'm not gonna say no. Nah, fuck it, blow my brains out. Nah, nah. I'm, yeah. like, I'm gonna be like, I'm be like, hey, yo, what's up, girl? You know, like, <laughs> what's up, my like, bad <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'll be, be mad confident, right? So, I, I, I definitely think you know we're coming. I don't know. Like, for me, experiences. Uh, that's the reason why I started working out. I remember some girl, one of my, one of my ex-girlfriends was like, yeah, there's, there's this cute guy who walks around shirtless and I think he's so hot. And I was like, yo, fuck this. 
<laughs> she said that to you. Yeah, it was, it was like a while. I was back in middle school though. What made her say that? I oh, know, okay. But... Never mind. Never mind. You yeah, fuck that bitch. She can die. Anyway, go ahead. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So, anyways. Uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, so I started working out because I was insecure about my body because I was like, you know, like I was skinny, but I was I was like a skinny fat, you know. He was yeah. like skinny, not skinny from the like, line. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's like, like it was never. He was never fat, but like, when he was skinny, he was like he wasn't buff. He was just, but he wasn't skinny, skinny. Yeah, he yeah, was yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was like a skinny <laughs> fat, weird, you know. So, so I was like, nah, I, I got to my body. So I started working out, and yeah. then um, that definitely boosted up my confidence a lot because I had like a, I just felt like cause I, I have I had abs that could like rule the world. And I ain't gonna lie though, that that if you guys want a tip, to get abs because you can definitely attract a lot more girls. Oh yeah. Like, I remember back in, like, 10th grade, like, I had a whole bunch of girls, like, just filling my stomach. That shit feels nice. It's like... Yeah, you know, I was like, yo, you so high. <laughs> yo, my ego boosted up so high, though, so don't let that happen to you, though. Because <laughs> your ego gets, gets so high. But honestly, though, insecurity, man, I guess one of the biggest things, like, I guess I know for, like, a lot of... Especially for me, it was a confident. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, my, my opinion, for, my tip for that is just tell yourself you're confident every single day. Yeah. Now, yeah. E- even if you don't believe it, just tell yourself that. Like, in the mirror, be like, I'm confident. And then when you're not feeling confident, say, I'm confident again. And just always keep telling yourself that. Yourself that and that help a lot. Can I add to that? Yeah, go ahead. I saw you about to, I saw you about to say something. Go ahead. No, that, that's pretty much it. Oh. Um, and, like, like with with the look, saying stuff in the mirror, like, with... So, just going to slightly bring it back a little bit. With stuff with depression, like, it... Telling yourself, like, okay, like, I'll feel better, things like that. It does help, but it's a very short-term thing. But with confidence, talking to yourself, like... You need to talk to yourself. Like, Facts. if you are not having conversations Facts. with yourself, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Like, because, like, yeah, confidence you, Basically, is you're just weird. If you don't yeah, yourself, if, if you weird. don't talk to yourself, you're weird, bro. <laughs> 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 it's like the, the, that confidence that you get from being by yourself, knowing yourself, and when you tell yourself, like, yo, I look good, you know? You'll start to, you'll, you'll slowly start to feel like, okay, well, my hair looks good today. You'll put effort into your hair. And it's like, oh, my shirt fits me like this, but won't it fit me like this? You put effort into your body, you yeah. know? And, like, it's, you, you, you put effort into what's, what's permanent. Yeah. You know? Uh, you also, know? all right, what are you no, saying? No, 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 I was basically, basically kind of, like, rebuttal what you said, like, just whatever you put your mind to, you should just go with it yeah. into the sense. Also, another tip is, like, um, dressing nice in school, like, doing your hair. Yeah. And, like, walking with, like, a good posture that, like, brings up your confidence a whole bunch, too. Like one, like one mistake I made like in like ninth grade, where I was the reason I was so self conscious because all I wore was gym shorts and a raggedy ass shirt, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's so what like, I wore with that was Jordans too. Yeah. So, I don't know. It was pretty <laughs> nice. Yeah. Hundred so, dollar Jordans. With yeah. That. With like a five, like a ten dollar outfit, right? So, but I, what, what, I'm not saying they should. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah, okay, okay. You got it. What, what I'm saying is, you shouldn't go out and, and buy like a three hundred dollar shirt, like like outfit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm done. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Who? Yo, man, y'all cooking me, bro. <laughs> he said you shouldn't buy a three hundred dollar outfit. What yeah, what you, you don't gotta buy a three hundred dollar outfit, but at least make it match, yeah. and like and, and and make it look like you added effort to your to your um, to your outfit. Like, I, I, it's, I mean, obviously, there are days where you can dress like a bum, you know, like, you know, for example, running late. But you should definitely, if you can, like, go out, spend some extra time in making your outfit. Because if you have a nice outfit and you feel your best, you, then you can definitely perform your best. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. If, if, you're, if your outfit, if what you... So... <laughs> yeah, I'm being cooked out here, man. I'm being no. bullied. <laughs> I'm about to cook myself. Uh, in high school, what Angel <laughs> wore... <laughs> The, the shit that Angel wore, right? And to him, that was Bubby. <laughs> I put that shit on, and I'm like, <laughs> I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> hey, 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 don't get me started. I remember what Jabril wore for a prom. He literally wore, like, you know, a button of it. Like, okay, that's nice. Is, is that sweatpants? Are you wearing sweatpants? <laughs> yeah, I, prom? Told I wasn't going to wear pants, man. <laughs> Wait, is that like a pink and, pink and purple shoes with that red shirt, huh? Yeah. Yo, yo, it, it was the style back then, man. It was like Soldier Boy wearing the big ass pants. Yeah. <laughs> nah, it's not even Soldier Boy. It was MC Hammer. Which one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, because you remember Soldier Boy was wearing big ass clothing? Big ass clothes, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Soldier Boy. <laughs> Sounds like um, Billy Eilish right now. Billy Eilish. Eilish, I apologize. Yo, she bad, bro. She makes me. Just kidding, she ate Have you all seen that meme? It was like, yo, she, she makes music for the press people who are afraid to ask for ketchup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. But yeah, definitely, like I said, definitely try to like just do your hair. Like, do things that will make you feel good. So, yeah. if, if doing your hair, like, if you forget to do your hair and it makes you feel insecure, then like, definitely do your hair, you know? And just honestly, the biggest thing is just really telling yourself that you feel confident. Because once, once, once you hit that peak, like, then you can talk to anybody. Yeah. And also, don't be afraid to talk to new people either. Like, you always want to stretch yourself. Because if you don't stretch yourself, then you're going to be even less confident. 
you know the best the best way with like when it comes to new people is just go straight and up talking. go and talk to them. like you yeah. if you it's sorry bug <laughs> if you <laughs> if you think about it it's just like so for us we cliff jump shit like that if except you me. think about it except me except Gabe sorry because okay. you know I kind of got ear infection because you think a pussy oh for real yeah, <laughs> pussy <we're>... anyway so. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about my insecurity? <laughs> this is my ear. <laughs> but like, if if you if you think about doing it beforehand, and you try to plan too much. Like, dude, you're gonna fuck up. Just go up and like, I'm not even talking to people in the sense of like trying to pull somebody. Just, just make just a friend. Yeah, yeah. Just, like, Honestly, go, don't like, think about it. Do it. <laughs> yeah. Just walk and be like, hey, what's up? My name's Jabril. I'm or like, what's up? My name's so and so. I'm trying to make a friend. You want to be friends? That's like. That's that's the best way to make friends. Or, 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 or what you do? You go up to them and be like, "Are you uh, are you John?" And they say, and then they're like, "No, no, I'm not John." And they respond back to you. And after that, you just start a conversation. Be like, "Oh yeah, yep. by the way, I'm Angel. What's your name again?" And then like that, you just make friends like that too. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. And all. That. Oh crap! I forgot. <laughs> but uh, yeah, de- definitely, definitely, you should always try to talk to new people, no matter like how nervous you get. Like Jabril said, don't don't think it, just go do it. Like the way the way the way I do it for myself too is like I give myself five seconds. In those five seconds, if I don't commit, then I'm not gonna do it. Yeah. That's what I do. So I, I give myself five seconds to like. I and don't. Have, yeah. Oh yeah, my fault. Okay. And don't be afraid to try something new. Sometimes, like you know, you don't like the color pink. Why not? Once in a while, try some. Try pink shirt. Yeah. Switch it up sometimes. For insecurities, remember action. Action cures fear. So yeah, if you're, if you're insecure about talking to new people, go talk to new people. Yeah. And then guess what? You won't be nervous anymore. If you're nervous about talking to this girl you like, go talk to her. What's the worst that can happen? You get rejected, right? Yeah. And then guess what? You move on. Yeah. On to the next. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. That, I, I don't know. What about you, Gabe? What are your insecurities? My insecurities? Oh, deep questions. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean... I remember Gabe wasn't insecure about his Facebook pictures. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, boy. He took it down. Yeah. I, I, you remember Gabe with this? <laughs> <laughs> Good times. Good times. <laughs> hey, I wasn't insecure. You just, y'all would just always go through my Facebook and flame me. <laughs> Yo, 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 Gabe, 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 Gabe was, the, Gabe was the, 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 Gabe was the beginning of a fuck boy. <laughs> Gabe was the, the precursor to, yeah. to fuck boys. <laughs> you need a course for that? Go to, uh, don't go to this. Yeah, go, go to Gabriel Santos. On, go to on my Facebook. Instagram at g. Santos underscore underscore underscore. Yo, yo, remember when Gabe said they have his emo haircut? Yeah. The, dude, oh my god, Gabe, 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 you were like, you were like a fuck boy, but you couldn't be a fuck boy because you had a girl. But if it wasn't, if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for a you'd be a fuck boy. <laughs> I want to be a fuck boy. Okay, Gabe, you, you, had, you had all the pre. <laughs> so you're talking about like right now too. Oh, uh, <laughs> what are we talking about now? <laughs> Oh, what we're talking about now? <laughs> yo, yo G- Gabe used to have his hair down, bro, and then and went down to his nose, bro. You couldn't see Gabe's eyes. <laughs> shit, sometimes I couldn't even see. What do you mean? Oh, shit, man. Oh, fuck. Uh, insecurities. Um, growing up, it was mostly, I guess you could say, my weight. Because yeah. I always was, like, always in a heavier side. Yeah. So I always, like, had, like, you know, a baggy shirt, black clothes, black and clothes, yeah. something like that. That's crazy. I don't do that. And, like, to this day, it's, like... Sometimes it stays in the back of my head. Yeah. So especially when I'm doing like public speaking, I'm like, damn, like they're looking at my clothes. Oh wait, they're they're talking about like, they they know like. They they know what I'm what I'm saying is bullshit or something like that. Like I always have this sense of doubt. So okay. why t- why I try to do is like prepare myself when I do like public speaking because I have a huge fear of public speaking. Do you really? Yeah. I don't mind, but I, then again, I think it's like that five seconds. Like if I if I have to, if I have to do it like clip jumping I just get my, I'm like all right I would gotta go ahead and just jump it you know same thing same thing with public speaking if I can if I and now I'm public speaking I'm just like well I can't back out now so I'm just gonna go ahead and just do it yeah yeah uh, for me I was like when I get up there I'm like I always have that sense of doubt so like what I try to do is just like prepare myself like I know like for example we're talking about water mm-hmm. I know literally to the smallest detail about it for like as long as I can like the time period I can so I can like know my like. No one can doubt me. If someone rebuttal, I got a rebuttal back for him. I know the smallest details, not the smallest fact, because then when I go to talk to a crowd, then I feel much more confident because woo, I yeah. can tell you so many times where I like I just stood up there, I'm like just stuttering, I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm like, oh yeah. my goodness, like I'm nervous, my leg is shaking, I'm sweating my ass <laughs> <Yeah>. off. <laughs> <laughs> oh sweat. Uh, I remember that sweat. Oof. Not again. Yeah. <laughs> Not again. Mm. Um, uh, what, what, are you, what are your insecurities, bro? Something I was like, so I used to be insecure about my skin, but that stopped early on. 
I guess after that, it was mostly my weight. Also, <laughs> that's funny. That's for me too. My, oh, my yeah. weight. Like that my weight. I, th- I think my my body shape was just weird. Yeah, so I, was, I was like, <laughs> Dude, I was, like, like I was like a skinny fat. You know, it's just like fucking everybody weird. Everybody when they were young just was just fucking weirdly shaped in the body area of like life. Um, I remember what the. F- <laughs> I just hell. So I remember when I was like, so my my biggest insecurity, right? I, I, when I was younger, so I was born with too much fucking estrogen, which probably explains a lot of what's wrong with me now. But um, <laughs> oh really? Yeah, I was but, like, I was told by a doctor, I was I had too much estrogen, and not to help the fact that my parents were feeding me like soy based products, which has estrogen in it. So oh, when I was younger, I literally had full on tits, <laughs> like oh. actual fucking boobs. Yo, when Jabro was in, in like kindergarten, but that that was the cutest little black kid I've ever seen in my life, bro. <laughs> So just imagine a bowling ball, like a black bowling ball, <laughs> with a legs and a tiny arms. That's what Jabril was. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he was so cute. Bro. His backpack was bigger than him, bro. Yeah, yeah. I, I had this little. Um, I had this. It was like his red, blue, and yellow jacket. I used to wear all the fucking time. And like, if it was hot, I had this jacket on. Like I didn't give I don't know why, but like well I think it was, it was another insecurity of mine, like my body shape, stuff like that. Um I think another thing I was insecure about was the way that I the way that I, I thought and talked to people. Because like I've come to realize like some some of the things I like I think about most people just or not some other people don't think about, you know? Yeah. Or I think about it in a different way. When I was younger I got bashed for it, you know? Yeah. Now like I see like it helps me with creative processes and stuff like that, but uh, was mostly the way that I talked, um, and how I was, I've always been blunt, I've never been able to fix it, I don't know why, I just, I just don't care enough to, like, I mean, I do, but it's like, I, I, after some point, it's just like, it's, that's me, I used to really hurt people's feelings, because they'd ask me a question, i just answer it, I was like, do I look fat in this? Yeah, <laughs> simple stuff like that, or like, I just, it just, my speech, I was very insecure about, like, how I said things, and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it was my stuttering. I used to stutter really bad. I used to make fun of my brother for stuttering, and then I started stuttering. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, don't make fun of people who stutter. Yeah, my, my stuttering's pretty bad, huh? A lot of times, like, even now, like, I'm, I try to control it. I know, yeah. so you, you catch yourself. Like, you, you'll be, like, about to stutter, and you're like, oh, and then you start talking yeah. again. Yeah. <clears throat> you know what I don't like? People that mumble. Oh, oh, that's awkward. Yeah, I mumble a lot, too. I, I mumble and stutter, which is, like, the worst. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you can do one or the other. How the fuck you going to do both of them? Yeah, it was pretty bad. But um, so was, so I think for me, stuttering was, like, more, like, an issue for me. Because I don't really care about mumbling. Because you don't understand me. I don't really care. Yeah. But, like, for stuttering, I was trying to be, like, I was trying to make other people understand me. So a lot of times I'd be, like, you know? Yeah. It's just hell annoying. So stuttering was definitely one of my biggest insecurities. But then after a while, I realized I just need to like slow down with my with my my mouth. Was your was like, your mind too faster than your mouth? Oh yeah. yeah. Is that the okay? Also, what I also learned too was like speaking slower actually makes a bigger impact than speaking faster. Yeah. yeah. So that's another thing I had to learn too. That's something I still need to do this day because I, sometimes I just well my my mind going I just my mouth try to catch up. Yeah. Because I just it just keeps going going and going and going. I'm like oh my goodness. I feel like Buster Rhymes at that point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I admit mean, that was a really good session, y'all. That was a really good session. That was. Is that everything for everyone? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Wow. All right, I just want to encourage it. Well, hold up. Okay, Jabril got some things. Okay, hold up. Can we, can we, are we only talking about insecurities or can we go back to the uh, mental health thing? Yeah, go yeah, back yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, okay. Any more comments, go ahead. Man. So I want to tell you guys, so when it comes to um, whatever you're diagnosed with, don't look into it too deep. Because it, 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 and I already said this earlier, you can play into it and it can hurt you. But so I'm gonna tell you guys the things that I was diagnosed with. I'm not sure. I, Angel already knows. I'm not sure if I told you though. What? The what I what they diagnosed me with impeachment. What was that? So uh, they diagnosed they diagnosed me with uh, ADHD, major depression. Um, what was it? Bulimia, um, borderline personality disorder. Fuck. What was it? Uh, Major personality disorder, like fucking, like two other things. I don't even. I don't even. I was. It was never. It was. It wasn't anxiety because I don't. I just don't feel. I don't feel anxious. Um, they did. They did say something like kind of like something antisocial, but like when I looked into it, it made me feel worse because I'm just like, well, fuck, (laughs) you know, It, it it just it just sucks, but the more you look into it, the the worse it gets, and also like if that. 
oh snap um i'm bipolar and i'm manic or like maybe just manic bipolar but like okay. if you manic like so up downs like okay. just crazy fucking spikes okay and <clears throat> it's okay to to knowing getting to know yourself don't do it through a diagnosis do it by yourself but it's okay to look at your diagnosis because like once i started i saw the symptoms of what i had i was like oh it made more sense about a lot of why i did things the way i did and then i was able to change it you know but look at it as that way but don't ever define yourself by your by whatever your diagnosis your your diagnosis does not define you and that's very people say that but when you really you, you have to really think that and believe it because that's that's it is what it is you know uh, yeah Wow, what a, what a nice little message at the end, Jabril. Thank you so much, guys. They know my heart. This was yes. This was def- This was the end of the podcast today. Um, we didn't have that. We didn't have that many Q and Q and A questions because uh, it was a very touchy subject. So we didn't really expect a lot. But uh, we do appreciate Jabril coming on today and uh, sharing us his story. Yeah, for real, thank you so much for coming yeah. on. Very. Uh, hopefully, you guys, you know, for you, any of you guys out there dealing with depression and stuff, it can be an inspiration because Jabril has been working on stuff to get a lot better. He's been making huge improvements. So thank you. Not not in any way to to diss Jabril, but if Jabril can do it, you guys can definitely do it too. You know, we're we're in the end, we're all humans. We all have the same problems, whether we like to believe it or not. So if you need someone to go. Take your brother's advice just because. Yeah, and then if you do I think about suicide, make sure you call the suicide hotline too, guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. That that one definitely helps out a lot. I've heard I've heard a lot of good, good <clears throat> things about that. So. You but know, uh, when it comes to, I'm gonna say one more thing. I'm okay. so sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. Let it out. Let this it out. one, this might actually lead to us talking a little bit more. Hey, I don't you. mind. I love so, talking. So, suicide. Here's my view on suicide. Right, and yeah. this is, this is going to be probably the most backward shit ever, and you guys. It, you can fully disagree with me. I understand. Okay. So, for me, the way I viewed suicide, and the way I still view suicide, is that, like, for me, it was just, like, people say it's, like, a selfish action, and I do agree with that, but for me, that was, like, no matter what I tried to do for myself, it wouldn't work. And for me, the way I thought was, like, that's the one thing that I would do that could work. And, like, when you think of suicide, people think of, like, oh, you, it's it's forbidden. You can't do it. You shouldn't do it. Stuff like that, right? Yeah. And I do, I agree with that. You shouldn't, you know? Um... Here's what I say. So, instead of thinking of suicide as something that you can't do ever, think of it as an option. And the reason I say think of it as an option because it takes away the taboo, the, the taboo around suicide. It, take, it takes away the... If, if somebody told you not to touch this, you're going to want to touch it. You know? If, yeah. you're, if you're depressed in that mindset, somebody tells you like not to do this, it's like, well, that's the only thing I can do. If you keep it as an option, it shows you that if that extreme is an option, you have so many more. Like, when you first think about it, it's just like, well, I could do this, you know? But at the same time, like, what else could I do? Like, it's just all about you need to open different pathways. Like, change your perspectives on things. Um, and, like, just remember, like, you... People say this shit all the time. I don't, I don't really feel it sometimes, but, like, your life does matter. You know, what you go through. Your, your feelings are justified, and you should never have to... You should never have to explain why you... Well, no, fuck that, no. That's bullshit. You, you, you... you you feel how you feel, and that is what it is. Yeah. And you can't help that. You can control your actions, you know, but you can't control the outcome, you know? Yeah. And so, Amen. like, no matter, no matter what you do, like, just keep working on yourself. Stay focused on, on, like, your goals and stuff like that. Be careful of the people you hang around and the people you let in your life. Be, being around more positive people will make you more positive. And especially if those positive people want to help you out. Don't take advantage of that. I've seen people take advantage of positive people and then, like, they end up screwing themselves over because they don't have anybody. Like, like, really, really, really care about the people who care about you. Because okay. that, that right there will definitely improve your life. Okay, one, one quick note, too. Um, one thing I would definitely say, guys, is always have dreams and ambitions to strive for. Because I feel like a man with no ambition or dream is a dead person, in my opinion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I agree. Yeah. Because for me, I think the reason why I've always been so happy is because I've always had a like, like a like small goals that I've always wanted to accomplish. Mm-hmm. Every time you accomplish it, it's like a like an energy booster. Yeah. It's like like wow, I just did it. you know? For example, like for me, like one of my like I guess workouts, I wanted to make sure I could hit 100 pull-ups in a session, mm-hmm. and I did it, and I was like, dang, that's awesome. Now I'm gonna go for 150, 200 stuff like that. Hell yeah. Hell and yeah, even, yeah. and that's just a that's just a you know like one for working out, but like even for life, you know. For example, like I was like back in a, in a high school, I was like you know I want to make a new friend today. And every day I'll go out and make a new friend. And obviously, you know, not, not everybody's going to be your friend. But when you did make a new friend, you're like, okay, I can make another one now. Yeah. I can make two more, you know? 
Yeah. Or I- even like just like long term goals in life, for example, like if you want to like you know spend more time with your family and you spend more time with your family, it's like a, it's like a small win. So yeah. definitely always have your ambitions and goals, but uh, mm-hmm. that's pretty much it. Any any anything else, Gabe? Before we officially um, close it, because we've been rambling, <laughs> saying we're gonna to turn it off. We don't. Um, challenge yourself. Don't settle for less. Always find a way. Like, like Angel said, find that goal and make sure it's like not too hard where you not reachable, but where small goals that will help you improve to that impossible goal that you once said it was to make it possible. Facts. All right, that's the end of our podcast. I want to encourage everyone to please leave a comment, like, subscribe, and leave us a question. And thank you for listening to us. Thank yes. you, Jabro, for coming. Because yeah, thank, you, thank you, Jabro, for coming. Took your time. We took some time time out of your day, which we appreciate, and we just appreciate. I feel a lot closer to you. That's for sure. Oh fuck. <laughs> and I, I think that's it. That's it, guys. All right, and that's Saturday day talks in EA. All right, everyone have a good night. Stay safe. Take care.